Da -da. Hello, my soccer universe. Let's review match day one of the European qualifiers for the 22 World Cup in Qatar. I know we have a very dense program, so we will not only do that, we also look ahead of what's gonna happen on Saturday and Sunday. Boy, was it hard to pick the jerseys back there on the wall. Um, I first decided to, you know, do it as usual, that I have the rankings how I have them. Uh, but then I decided to do it a little bit differently and look at the difference in the ratings before this first match day and the second. And so you get the biggest winners uh, of this match day, more or less, at least results wise, not performance wise. Uh, and it also allows me to showcase a little bit the variety of my European collection. Yes, there are only a few that have been doubled. Greece and Ukraine, uh, second and third in their, how to say, performances in change of ratings. Number one is, of course, the jersey that I'm wearing, which is Turkey. Although I was not too happy about that result because, as you know, I'm a Dutch fan. Um, I, but that's only for the teams that I have in there, uh, that I have chargers, because actually the number, the second best would be Slovenia, uh, which I don't have yet, and I definitely have to. I still like the away jersey from 1890, but the current home jersey is really, really nice too. Uh, other teams that are not in there, I give you the, uh, the ratings of biggest performances, and then we'll move on. So we have Turkey, number one, we have then Slovenia, Greece, Ukraine, Cyprus I don't have, Denmark, Montenegro I don't have, Switzerland, then three that I don't have, Romania, Bosnia and Kosovo, uh, Bosnia probably the easiest one for me to get, then the Czechs, then Armenia and then Germany, so actually everything down here below is actually not that great <laughs> after Germany, especially on this one. No, they're all doing do, do great, I, I think uh, between the Russia here, and uh, Norway, which is way up there in the corner next to Denmark, or whoop, here, uh, we would also have the Faroe Islands and Albania. So yeah, there, there, there you go. Let's see what happened uh, this week. Uh, it really started out with a bang, and probably the biggest result, arguably, of this um, match day with Turkey beating the Dutch 4-2. I actually went in there in, the, in this game expecting a rather slow start. No, nothing like it. Absolutely nothing like it. And I have to say, overall, the quality of the games were really uh, good. Most of the, the ones that are watching, and some really amazing games in there. And Turkey and Netherlands definitely was one of those. Of course, the Netherlands having, or the Dutch having a lot of ball possession and playing, you know, but it's all horizontal, 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 nothing really ver vertically. That's what the Turks brought. The Turks also brought a lot of fight. And uh, the Dutch were more concerned in uh, claiming penalties. So uh, on the counter-attack, Vedek Chalanoglu plays it to Yilmaz, who takes a shot that is slightly deflected and it's 1-0 for Turkey. Um, deservedly so. I was a uh, teeny bit shocked, I have, to, I have to say. And again, I'm not hiding it. I am the Dutch of one of my two favorite national teams in Europe, the other one being Italy. So, uh, but I had a uh, kind of a fuzzy feeling. Yilma scores the second one. He always seems to score against the Dutch from a panel penalty. Clear penalty right, right there. Maybe the Dutch were miffed that they didn't get that one before. But honestly, I have to say, it was not a must call. Uh, the absence of VAR was definitely something um, that I found odd. I know why they do it, because everywhere we have to, uh, we have, to have the same conditions. But for those big games, I think... You should have war. You should have war. I mean, I understand if, if Andorra plays against Liechtenstein that there might not be war, uh, but you need war. So it goes 2-0 in the half and it was all fully deserved, really. Uh, and then after, after half, just off the kick of John Nogla takes a great shot. 3-0 for Turkey. Uh, and for the longest of times, I, I actually got a little bit bored of the game because I thought uh, it, that basically is it. Um, however, Klaassen comes on the 69th and Dumfries came on for Marlon and Tete. And that actually changed a little bit the game because within a minute, Klaassen and De Jong, and both of them Klaassen was involved, especially the goal by Klaassen um, with the spin move. Makes it 3 2 in the 76. Game on. The Dutch are pressing forward. However, Bura Gilmas with a wonderful free kick makes it 4 2. Puts the game to rest. Or, no, there was a penalty given, but Depay has it saved. 
it was not a good performance by the Dutch. Absolutely not. And I have to say, ever since Ronald Koeman left for Barcelona, I'm worried about the Dutch team again. It, this group, it's not inconceivable that the Dutch will not qualify from. Or will not win this group. Um, I hope they turn, turn, they turn around. But I am starting to get really, 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 really worried there. And I'm not sure Frank de Boer, he was great at Ajax for a while, but everything since... Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Norway wins 3-0 at Gibraltar in one of the most underrated jersey matchups. I only got a dark picture here, but uh, it was also that Holland did not score. There were also protests, uh, all the Norwegian players uh, lining up, putting human rights t-shirt. I mean, there's a huge discussion in Norway going on whether they should go to Qatar if they uh, qualify. Um, I think, I mean, I support them doing that, I'm just worried about uh, that generation because if you would, hypothetically, if you would qualify and then you would say you're not going, I'm sure that FIFA will ban the federation for an entire cycle, which actually would put the generation in doubt. Um, you cannot do this alone as Norway. Uh, you need some heavy hitters to join you in that. Um, and yeah, uh, we can go a whole lot of uh, uh, rabbit hole down, down there. So I personally, although I totally support with all the crap that is going on around that uh, World Cup, that there is some protests against there. But I think if you qualify, you better go because you hurt, you're really hurting yourself. Although that will also speak big for your conviction. Um, Latvia and Montenegro. Latvia actually took the lead in the 40th, but right then Jovetic, right a minute after Jovetic equalizing, also gets a nice uh, winner there. I don't have any tables yet, so we're just going to go through the draft, but it's match day one, so it's fine. Um, Portugal, Azerbaijan. Boy, this was a, a boring game in Turin. In Turin. Uh, yes, Portugal had some chances, but it was not good. It was not good. And it tells you everything that you have Cristiano against Azerbaijan hoping to increase his tally and then it's an own goal that decides the match. Mm. Serbia, Ireland, though a whole lot better. Uh, Ireland taking Kagan taking lead through Brown in the 18th. Vlahovic getting the equalizer after a great assist by Ta Tadic, but this was the Mitrovic show. Ta um, actually the Tadic show because he uh, assists three and I think this, the three one by Mitrovic, or was it the two one? I, I don't know. One of one of those two. A wonderful goal, a lob from far out, absolutely gorgeous goal. Uh, Serbia being on their best, however defensively, it's a little bit always uh, shaky. And Collins pulls one back. I uh, have to say, Serbia is probably the best team missing from the Euros. But hey, they could not beat Scotland. So, cannot really, really complain. Another entertaining game was between Finland and Bosnia Herzegovina, uh, where it really got to uh, a life in, in a second half when a penalty for Bosnia was given. Uh, the Pjanic uh, is initially safe, but on the re rebound he can put it in. But Timo Pukki then turns it around for Finland with two goals. Uh, one's really uh, running nicely, uh, two, two goals, the other one a nice uh, shot, but Stefanovic late uh, can equalize and it is 2-2. Two, two. Probably uh, too little for Finland to, 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 to be honest, because in the group is also France and Ukraine. And that was a weird game. <laughs> because in the first half, France really showed that they are the world champions. And also a uh, nice jersey match matchup. But as you can see, Ukraine is up there because they got the 1-1 one, one draw. Uh, the goal by Griezmann should not have stood because in the build-up uh, there was an offside position by Pavar. Again, VAR not there. Um, but the shot by Griezmann was, was really nice and France well could have pulled a second or a third, third in, at the, uh, in the first half. However, as soon as Kim Pembe scores an uh, obscure own goal, I mean, it's a really a deflection where, uh, unlucky, the whole thing breaks apart and Ukraine really rides it home very, very swiftly. Given that they lost, I think, 7-1 not too long ago uh, in France uh, in a friendly with a lot of players missing, I, that's a big result. France is typically starting out slow and this is one of the themes. We either had very quick starts or we had very slow starts from uh, there. Um, Belgium, yeah, that uh, was a slow start, but actually that's the game I, I, I watched. The first goal by Wales was a wonderfully played, played attack uh, in the 10th minute. Uh, the way Harry uh, Wilson then uh, converts from Bale, really, 
Probably one of the best attack attacking moves that I saw uh, in all these games there. However, once Wales was up 1-0, and again, why is Belgium playing at home in white and uh, weird jersey matchups everywhere most of the time? That was one of one of those. However, aside from that, um, yeah, De Bruyne from far out, uh, Torgan Hazard, make it 2-1. It seemed inevitable. Belgium just turn it on, then they get a Lukaku penalty. Wales was a little bit better at the beginning of the second half as well, but you know, uh, the longer it went on, the more Belgium had control and uh, rode home a 3-1 victory. victory. In the end, it was really um, how bad we will we, we really get. Estonia also took an early lead against the Czechs uh, in the 12th minute, but that actually just turned turn, turn, turn for the Czechs uh, through Schick. In the 18th, Barak in 27th, and then Suchik with a hat trick from the 32nd, 43rd, and 48th. Um, and Yankto make it 6 1. However, the last goal was for the Estonians, but a pretty dominant performance by the Czechs, one has to say. Uh, their neighbor, Slovakia, horrible showing against Cyprus, 0 0. Russia winning uh, rather easy in uh, Malta, Juba, Fernandes. Scoring the first half, Mbong pulls for Vegas, so Bolyev puts the game to rest in the 90th. Um, and a big uh, shock, Slovenia beating the neighbors Croatia. I think Croatia reached uh, Zenit in uh, Russia in 2018, and now I think they need to break in a new uh, generation. Lovric in the 15th gets uh, the first goal. It actually was never really that uh, I think Slovenia could have run away with it. And can I say Slovenia? I said it before. Really nice jerseys. Uh, the Croatia one stole. Uh, so yeah, uh, that was a big shocker right there. Um, and, and that was one of the games that I actually had a little bit an eye on and decided then not to watch. I really wanted to watch Bulgaria, Switzerland. Um, a kick of a six uh, at six o'clock, but I decided, okay, let's miss the first 15 minutes and have dinner with my uh, wife. And then I come up and I'm, uh-huh. Three nil it was for Switzerland. Seven, ten, twelve. And that was the game. And Bolo Seferovic and Zuba, although it was all Shaqiri because uh, the ball wasn't lying on the line and Zuba pulled it over. Despotov, right after the half, puts it one back. This was one where you shouldn't have missed uh, the early minute and everything else that was boring. The, the best thing that I can say about Bulgaria, I really like the jerseys. I don't like the Swiss jerseys though. Um, Italy also with, with a fast start. In the 14th, um, Florenzi plays a ball through Berardi, who runs, 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 and then is near the tar touchline and then yanks it in, in, into net. Goalkeeping mistake, De definitely. 38th, Insignia to Immobile, also. Goalkeeper didn't look good, it was in the near, near corner, 2-0. But Italy really looking uh, straightforward, trying to get uh, goals. However, in the second half, they seemingly decided, nah, especially once Barella came off, uh, they really decided, let's, uh, we have this in the bag. Uh, Donnarumma, unfortunately, did also not look all the same in Northern Ireland. If they would have a striker up, up there, they could have made a goal and maybe could have pulled it back to 2-2 because Italy was not happening in the second half anymore. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, Israel-Denmark was shown on Austrian TV because it's the same group there. Um, yeah. The first goal by Braithwaite after a wind pass. I mean, he was running on, on the goal, nicely chipped over. Uh, Denmark, definitely the more mature team. However, uh, again, if Israel could score, and I don't get it. I mean, you have Munas Tabur, you have Zahavi up there. You have the firepower, but they don't score. Uh, cannot convert their chance, their chances, and then wind makes it 2-0, and that settles it, it for Denmark. I know the team against which Israel will score, and will score a lot because they have an Austrian coach. And they will, of course, do it against Austria. And Austria is so prone to actually mess it up. We'll talk about that in a second. But first, we need to mention Moldova. I love those blue Moldova jerseys, I have to say. Getting a 1-1 against the Fair Fairy Islands. Probably overall fair on balance. The Fairy Islands had a big one, a uh, big chance missed, where I think um, Moldova could clear off the line. But uh, Moldova had maybe the plus in chances very late on. The Fairy Islands can equalize. Scotland, Austria. I actually watched that one. <sighs> It's so frustrating. First of all, frustrating because uh, the coach cannot decide on which goalkeeper to take. So there is not much, uh, how, how, how to say, there's not much trust or more. 
There's something missing. Decide on a goalkeeper stick, stick with him. Don't change around. Now he chose the last goalkeeper, and I think he actually is the best goalkeeper at the moment in Austria. But you know, not having enough uh, games with your defense is always going to cause trouble, and he did not look really good. Uh, in the first half, I mean, he played once the ball uh, to a Scottish defender, then he saved it. But uh, that's the one frustrating. The other one. I think in both halves, Austria really started out how I expect them to play fast, press high and higher. But then they always fell back, fell back and let the Scots back in, in, into the game. And uh, I don't want to say Scotland is a bad team, surely not. However, they're not the greatest national team side out there. And this is a side that Austria could press to death. But if you hang back and then you stay back, keep it tight, keep, keep, keep it tight. Uh, Frustrating the first half. Frustrating watch. Absolutely frustrating watch. Uh, how you had a game under control. I mean, within uh, two minutes, you could have made it 1-0. You had the game firmly under control. And then uh, starting minute 15, 20, you let it slide. You totally let it slide. And yes, it was a squad that played uh, like that the first time. Because there are many uh, players missing with in injuries and Sabitzer uh, uh, missing like at the eve of the game definitely did not help. Still uh, frustrating. Uh, it, that, that, that side is still good, good, good enough. I keep saying, and I, I know it sounds ridiculous if you look at the results of all Austria. This is a team that is loaded. This is a team that could really, I'm not kidding, if you have a good coach in there, and we will not get a good coach because uh, there's too much politics in there. We will not get a good coach. Uh, I mean, for the, of the, all the candidates they had, we had in 2000, uh, late 2017, he was the best of a bunch of bad candidates. And he will, he's doing a decent job, but he's not doing a great job. Yes, he has the stats back him up, he's, but uh, in a way. But if I look at the way they're playing and what we could be playing, which we were showing in Poland, uh, was it already two years ago? Yeah, it was 2009, 19 in Poland. How we could be playing. It's just galling. It's just galling. We will drop unnecessary points like this one because this was a game uh, that Scotland fairly, fairly got a point out of and probably should have even won it. We'll talk, 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 talk about that. But when I look at just uh, the way the teams are playing, Austria should have that game in the bag and put that game away. That's how I feel about this one. Uh, second half of course, was a lot better than the first half, and we got a lot of goals. Um, and I have, I have had to say the first goal was all the goalkeeping. I mean, the shot by Grilic in the driving rain takes a dive right in front of the goal. goal. It's hard to say if Kalajic can um, uh, pull it away, um, and he's in great form. I mean, that's an, another thing. That there, are, there are young players coming. <laughs> you really, you are spoiled for for choice. They are all, and, and, and one thing, we don't have an Alaba, and Sabitz, I think, are probably the best players at, at the moment. They are a little bit about the race. It's all really level. I mean, you can plug and play almost. Ah. And then, yeah, we have to talk about the big one because 50 feet, in a 56 minutes, Scotland should have had a penalty. How that was not given a penalty, Il Sanka basically wrestling a Scottish player in the box to, to the ground, it's not a penalty. Uh, we cannot complain about that one. Uh, basically, to make make it up, then Kalajic a little bit later scores a second. F seemingly having committed a push, I didn't see anything. That goal should have stood as well. So yeah, uh, give and take. Uh, Austria really seemed to be cruising to that win at the, at the point and I was just saying just go for the second No, we're hanging back. We hang 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 back and then yeah, the last goal goalkeeper spills one uh, a Long free kick by O'Donnell Everyone is standing high and I have to say yes It was maybe weir weirdly placed, but he has to come out and just fist it away. No, he stays in and Ilsanka does not stay with Henley um, and he can head it in freely. Uh, yeah, goalkeeping mistake, but also by Ilsanka, who was also really, 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 really bad there. Uh, but fortunately, we have Kalajic, who, after a nice line across with a 
great header, and this is the stuff that I want to see. Makes it a uh, two two of Austria. I thought, yeah, but now we avoid. No, 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 because we cannot defend set pieces, and we uh, cannot put players offside. So McGinn, uh, and that's pretty probably, probably the, everywhere. That's why I didn't choose that one. Everywhere you can see that picture when you uh, type Scotland Austria, he with the bicycle kick puts in that really nice goal. And I actually thought aside the point that uh, Scotland should have probably scored the winner there. Wasted, absolutely wasted, wasted, wasted chance. Uh, wasted is also what Spain will think about Greece because similar to France, first half, you had Greece in the back, Greece just out there to, to defend. And I have to say the goal by Morata, the way he takes the pass from Koke, chests it down in the internet, wonderful goal. You think everything's fine. However, they give up a penalty and I thought it was a penalty, uh, and Bacasetas can pull it home. 1-1 one, one for Greece. And then Spain, like France, cannot find a way back. And Spain has a problem break, break, breaking down uh, defensive teams. Take a note, group opponents. I think Spain games will be tedious to watch at the Euros, because everyone will hold back, because Spain cannot break them down. Congratulations, Greece. You're rightfully there here on my number one spot. Yes, Turkey is better, and I know there's a very... Uh, yeah, I don't want to get into any, <laughs> into any politics here, but yeah, 1-1. One, one. Uh, and congratulations, Greece. I know I have some Greek subscribers and I'm sure they will be happy, although... Uh, nah, against Spain, even if Austria would hold, hold, hold back, I would be very happy if you get a draw in Spain, so really congratulations. Sweden-Georgia was all about Zlatan and he contributed. And if you see the Swedish goal, Wonderful control by Zlatan and the way he placed the ball and then even better control by Klassen because it was a little bit misplaced to make that goal. Uh, the problem is Sweden didn't make a second goal and Georgia well could have gotten an equalizer uh, with some luck. But yeah, Sweden gets the win, that's all they need. Albania uh, wins it with a, a goal uh, in the first half against Albania. England against San Marino, what can I say? I mean, uh, it was only about how many goals you would get. And to be honest, I think England got too little. Because in that group, it might well be. That group is deceiving one for, for England. Uh, with Poland and Hungary in there, um, you need to pile on to San Marino again. Why is England playing in blue? Anyway. 5-0 it is, goals by Ward Prowse, Calvert Lewin, Sterling, uh, again Calvert Lewin, Oli Watkins. As I said, I I'm fearing it might be a little bit too little. Um, and then Hungary, Poland, probably the best game of them all. Uh, with Salai and Zolai scoring the first two goals for Hungary. Um, and uh, yeah, again, Hungary also playing in their away jerseys, which they seem to do. And I know I need to get the, that's the last one that's missing for my, that I have a full Euro co collection. Um, Hungary getting those two goals. Ah, uh, yeah, what, what do I want to say in, in the back? I mean, the two countries clearly like each other because it was all Hungarian and Polish and the friendship and that was what we have, 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 have there. Yeah, I don't want to make political commentary, but I thought, oh yeah. But I really thought this might be a good game and turned out to be good. So it was a 2 0 hung, hung, hung great. But then within a minute, similarly like, like the Netherlands, um, Biontek and Jozwiak can equalize, and it's 2 2 in the, 60, in, in, in the 61st. Then Poland is pressing to get uh, the, um, uh, the lead. But with their one chance, Willy Orban uh, gets his 3 to 2 hung Hungary. But of course, if you have Lewandowski, you're always in, in, in the game, who with a great move uh, makes it 3 3. And then in the very end, probably Hungary, um, Hungary could, 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 could have lost it. They got a red, red card, Lewandowski had another chance. But 3 3, very exciting game. Germany against Iceland, another team that was protesting uh, for the human rights. Um, and another team that played in their uh, away jerseys, and I have to say, uh, Germany in all black always looks a little bit weird to me. I, the jerseys look great, don't get it, don't, don't, don't get it, but given German his history and all black uniforms, I don't know. Goretzka, Havertz, Gundogan, the three goal scorers, um, was not exciting, but you know, that's you got the goals, you got the win, that's all that counts. Liechtenstein uh, only lost 1-0 to Armenia. Uh, their goalie made some great saves. In the end, it was an own goal. That's the only thing that beat them. And then Romania, North Macedonia. Another exciting game. I mean, Romania, I don't know why they decided now to go with white pants and a little bit white on there. I have to say, I like the previous jerseys better, better and I think Romania looks bet, best in all yellow. And if they have another color, it should be blue and red there. Anyway. 
I'm digressing. Tanasia Mihaila seemingly set them on a very safe course uh, to, to, to get a win. However, North Macedonia come back again. Double. Ademi and Tarakowski, 82nd and 83rd. But it got even more exciting because Ione Haji gets the winner. So very exciting there. And ending a pretty decent match day one with also some upsets that are called for. And I think we will see more because the games come now really, 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 really tight. Uh, let's see what will happen Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Norway, Turkey is one that really sticks out. I think at three o'clock also on Saturday, Russia, Slovenia, the ghosts of 2009. Remember when Slovenia eliminated Russia? That might be one. Netherlands is a must win against Latvia that they should get. Czech Republic against Belgium, I think that's also one. So I have already three games that I really think could be very, very exciting. Uh, Serbia, Portugal. Oh, I'm spoiled for choice there. Kazakhstan, France. Yeah, getting back. Uh, Spain should beat Georgia and I would say should. Um, I'm not sure if I will watch Austria against the Faroe Alliance on Sunday. I think there will be more exciting games. Bulgaria, Italy, unfortunately, yeah, I probably will watch it, but it will not be the most exciting there. I have to say there are not that many great games. Romania, Germany, I uh, probably will watch Bulgaria, Italy. I've been there in 2015. Yes, I watched in the rain in Sofia. I saw that. Uh, I have to say the late Sunday games are all not that exciting, to be honest. Uh, Ukraine, Finland, yeah, I think there's much better stuff on Saturday. So yeah, long video, let me know what you thought about the games. I think it was really exciting. I watched highlights of all of these. I like national teams and I especially like national team jerseys. So, I'm not sure. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will try to get uh, proper projections for the next video that you should get Monday-ish. But let's see about that. And yeah, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all updates, all things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!